Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and welcome to Playload. This is all my video game pickups for the month of December 2021, and yeah, man, happy new year. I hope you guys had a happy holidays and all that sort of stuff, and it's crazy to think the year's already over, but uh, before we get into all the video game pickup stuff, I uh, just want to do me a favor. Please like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that, and check me out on all the social media stuff, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, all that stuff's in the description, as well as my new channel called Flying and Eating, which is all about adventuring, flying and eating, and all that sort of stuff. Now, let's move on. Um, yeah, so uh, a couple, of, right here at the beginning, stuff we got is some kind of holdovers from last month. It was really stuff I got on Black Friday, but it didn't arrive until December. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show it to you now. Some more modern stuff. Um, some physical Xbox One slash Xbox Series X games. We got Immortal Phoenix Rising. Uh, Ubisoft actually sent me like a key for like the ultimate DLC edition of this quite some time ago, but I thought it would be cool to have a physical edition just to kind of go with it, especially because at that point it's like 10 bucks or whatever over at Best Buy. So yeah, I mean, yeah, cool game actually. If you, it was kind of Ubisoft's take on like Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild specifically. So yeah, uh, check it out. <laughs> um, I got one that I that nobody likes. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. This is the game that I think a lot of old school Sega guys like myself were hoping would be better, and then it turned out to not be. Uh, it's Balan Wonder uh, Wonder World. Uh, this was made by Yuji Naka. It's very clear he was kind of just by the aesthetics and kind of from everything we understood he was going for. He was trying to create like the next Knights into Dreams game without access to that IP. Um, and the game did not live up. So while I don't know any of the details of it, I can't help but wonder if, you know, he went to Sega with the same pitch and they were like, no. Uh, and so he just like, screw you, I'll go off and make it on my own. And then he didn't do it very well. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I wanted it just for that reason, like being the spiritual successor, but it's kind of in that, it's a spiritual successor in the way Mighty Number no. 9 was to, to Mega Man. It's that's an asterisk you know in the series but <laughs> probably not a worthwhile one but whatever i picked it up again because it was cheap because now this game nobody wants it um now a sega game people did want and i was happy to finally get was uh lost judgment of course the sequel to judgment uh sega sent me a key for this quite some time ago but again i wanted to own the physical edition of it because that's just how i roll uh, but yeah, this is a really, you know, part of the Yakuza series. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what this is, but you should check it out if you haven't. And this one, same basic story, actually. Um, I got this from Gamefly. Uh, this is Sonic Colors Ultimate for the Xbox One slash Xbox Series X. Um, this includes a Sonic keychain and all that. Again, same deal. Sega sent me a key for it, but, uh, I was able to get this for like $6 on Gamefly, and it comes with the keychain and all that sort of stuff, uh, so you know, what the hell, added that to the list. Um, fortunately, that game has been patched a bit and runs better on the Xbox One than it did originally, so very cool. Um, but that's it kind of for newer stuff. The rest of the stuff kind of is either like packages or came from conventions. Um, so uh, in the middle of the month in December, I was a guest at Kansas City Retro, which was a brand new convention. It was cool to, to go to. It wasn't the biggest event, but I got to bring the Sega Pluto down there and I was a guest and all that sort of stuff. And while I was there, uh, not only did I, you know, hang out with a bunch of people, we actually did something kind of fun. My buddy Ben, who lives down there, has a complete PS3 set. Uh, and Joe Sullivan, who travels with a, uh, a museum of video game stuff, he was also there as a guest. And he actually brought a copy of NBA Elite 11. Uh, if you don't know anything about that, it's the rarest PS3 game ever made because it was never really released. The estimate is somewhere between like 11 and 100 copies of that game even exist. It's a long story, but um, basically we decided we'll get together, we'll go to Ben's house, and we'll put all of that together. Uh, and then for the first time ever, and perhaps ever, you'll see a complete PlayStation 3 set. Just because because of that game, it's essentially impossible for anyone to really have one. Uh, but outside of that game, Ben actually had a full set. So it was just kind of a weird photo op thing that a bunch of nerds would do. And then why not? We put the Sega Pluto with all of it because we're weird. Uh, so yeah, we, we had fun. Um, but at that con, I also managed to pick up some stuff. Uh, the first thing I got was actually just something I was just given. Uh, the, the person who gave this to me requested to remain anonymous, um, probably because of the nature of what they gave me. But while this may not look like much, this is actually uh, what is called an R4... Um, I, I don't even know if that's... I, I guess it would just call the R4. It's a, it's a DS... Um, 
flash card basically so you put this it, it'll technically it'll work on a 3ds and all that but it's really just for nintendo ds games you put nintendo ds games on an uh, sd card and then you can run them off of the console or the handheld sorry so yeah think of it like a EverDrive, but not an officially branded one. So just kind of a neat little thing. So that was just given to me for free. So thank you very much to that individual who, again, wished to remain anonymous. Um, and I, at the actual convention itself, I mostly just picked up OG Xbox stuff. Uh, here's some random games. I'm, I'm still trying to get a full OG Xbox set. Um, and I'm chipping away at it. The cons are making it easier now that those are kind of coming back. We've got iNinja. Uh, Bard's Tale, which I think the reason this this suddenly got cheaper because it got re-released, so I think less people care about the original version now. Uh, Mike Tyson Heavyweight Boxing. This isn't. I'm not gonna say there's anything valuable about this game, but it's one that I almost never see, so I was really surprised to see it. So I just went ahead and grabbed it. Um, this is nothing. This was just a throw-in. Uh, FIFA Soccer 2003. Pinball Hall of Fame: The Gottlieb Collection. Whatever. Uh, ATV 2 Quad Power Racing, or ATV Quad Racing, or sorry, ATV Quad Power Racing 2, and AMF Bowling 2004. Really, nothing that special. I think Bard's Tale is probably the best one in there, uh, but really I just got them just to get more stuff off the list. Um, after the convention, though, I was still, I was still around for a few hours the next day, and uh, the guy who ran the convention, awesome guy named Nate, uh, we decided to hang out for a while. He took me around a few stores. We just did some random stuff. And we went into this one, like, store that was kind of like all things retro. You know, it's just like old toys, old, you know, music, old movies, all that sort of stuff. And they had a small but interesting little game section in there. And among that was a specific section about, like, demo discs. And I was just like, you don't see that very often. So I just started looking through it. And I found two that I actually thought were worth picking up. Um, the first one is actually a Dreamcast demo disc, sort of. Uh, this was a pack-in with the first issue of Official Dreamcast Magazine. Uh, this is not actually a Dreamcast formatted disc. It's actually a PC disc that just contains, um, you know, like, uh, artwork and videos for various games that were going to come out. So, like, it has footage of Sonic Adventure, Crazy Taxi, NFL 2000, uh, Sega Rally 2, Soul Calibur, and Shenmue, um, among other things. Now, I actually already own this. I've got the magazine that it came with. I've got the disc. I really had no great reason to own this, except that this is an extraordinarily uncommon disc. Because uh, most people just chucked it because it's not actually a Dreamcast formatted disc. I was really stunned to see it there, so I was pretty happy to pick it up. Like, this is so uncommon that the, um, the guys at the Redump Project, they were just trying to archive everything, you know, on the internet for, like, every Dreamcast disc ever released... They reached out to me because they're like, you're the only person we know ever who has a copy of that disc. So I ripped it for them th before I owned this one. And I, so again, it's that uncommon. I was surprised to see it. So I was like, oh yeah, no, I'm going to pick that up and save that. Um, and the other thing I got that was just bizarre because I didn't even... This is a sealed Xbox 360 demo disc from Walmart. Um, the disc includes a bunch of trailers and demo discs for various things. Uh, it, it functions on a DVD player, too, which is even stranger, but, yeah, I don't know, I, I, it just kind of, I didn't even know this was a thing, and it was only, like, a couple bucks, so I was like, that's ah, just funny, I'm just gonna pick it up just for the bizarreness factor, but yeah, that, that, that was really all I got there, so, uh, as well as my little, um, guide for having gone there, which was cool, uh, it, uh, it actually, there's, like, a little write-up about me being a guest there and all that sort of stuff, which was really cool. Uh, so, very, very cool. And, oh, the other thing I got there, which is not video game related specifically, but it was kind of neat. Um, so, I've talked about this a little bit in the past. Uh, I, I, I worked on a video game once. Uh, I don't play Magic the Gathering. I want that very clear. I don't know anything about that game. But I was asked to voice a character for a game called Mana Strike. I voiced a character named Soren. And it never, it was just, for me, it was just kind of a neat thing to do, but whatever. And, but... I'm not part of the Magic the Gathering universe, I don't know anything about it, so I never really talked to any of those guys, so I've interacted with a few of them at conventions, like when there's some crossover there, uh, and in this case, uh, a guy came by and he was like, oh, I'm super excited to see you, he asked me to sign a couple of things, he had some Soren cards, and it was the first merch I ever signed for the character, uh, and then on top of that he had a gift for me, he gave me this, he's like, this is a, uh, a Soren card, this is the one that's interesting, the thing that's interesting about this is that it's, the artwork is done by the same guy who does the artwork for the Final Fantasy games, so, yeah, he was like, just thank you for, you know, coming out and all that sort of stuff, so this is a really nice thing of him to do, so, uh, I've got this now, this, and I've got this big, like, you know, I guess they call play mats, 
uh, which are big, like mouse pads of the character. I'm gonna have to figure out how to like frame it or something. Because yeah, I voice. I'm the only person who ever voiced that character in a video game. <laughs> there you go. So thank you, thank you. Um, now, so that was the end of Kansas City Retro. It was, it was very cool. Uh, and I have a bunch of other random stuff. I, I ended up doing another convention like a week later in Sacramento called Sac Gamers Expo, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and that one was a little bigger. That was my second time at that show. It, you know, it, in that case, it had I had done like a panel and that kind of thing. I hung out with John Riggs a lot, and of course Pat Contry and uh, Jay from the Game Chasers, and you know other other people and stuff. It, it's a fun show. It's a fun show. Um, so I ended up wandering around and getting more random assorted games as as one does at these types of things. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, let's just go over them. Uh, I got some 360 stuff. I got Conan. Uh, now, this one I only picked up because this game just became backwards compatible in that last big update. So I was like, oh, I better jump on that before the price on that one goes up because that seems to be the case most of the time. Uh, this one comes with a little, like, exclusive comic book or whatever about the character. I'm not really a Conan the Barbarian guy. I just picked it up and just, I noticed that it was complete. Uh, I picked up Jumper, Griffin's Story. Uh, this is based on the Jumper franchise. It was a movie franchise in, like, 2006, 2007-ish era. And... If you've heard me talk about this in other videos, one of the, the the type of games I like to pick up for platforms like the 360 and the PS3 and whatever is games that were based on movies. Because we don't really do that that much anymore. There aren't that many movie tie-in games specifically. I think it's mostly because they're usually bad and that the secret's kind of out on that. But the reason I like to pick them up is because I can essentially guarantee you this game will never get re-released in any other form. No one's ever going to go back and re-release the Jumper movie tie-in game for anything. Uh, so that's the type of thing where it's totally worthless until suddenly it's not. Um, so yeah, I, I just felt like jumping on that. Uh, and this one I believe was just thrown in. Uh, this is Qu Call of Juarez, uh, Bound in Blood, which I didn't even realize this one is also backwards compatible too. So cool to pick that up. Uh, an early Ubisoft series that I don't think they've revisited in quite some time. But yeah, I think there was three of them on the 360 and now I think I have all three. So there you go. Um... Got some original Xbox stuff. The first thing up, though, from that is not actually a game. I was just kind of surprised to see it. There was a dude who had a bunch of uh, soundtracks. Now, it was mostly, like, anime stuff and stuff I don't care about. Um, and this game in particular was not one that I'm, like, a huge fan of or anything. But I was just like, huh, you don't see that. This is a soundtrack, a, mu a two-disc soundtrack. Uh, well, one disc is technically a promo DVD. And the other is the soundtrack of uh, the game Brute Force for the original Xbox. Brute Force was like a big OG Xbox exclusive. In fact, I think it was a launch title. It was one that Microsoft was pushing really far, obviously to the point where they gave it its own official soundtrack. I've never seen this before. I had no idea that it even had one. I kind of like picking up stuff like this because, again, this is like that oddball type of thing that nobody cares about it right now, but you can see one day where somebody's like, huh, I didn't even know that existed. That's worth a bunch or whatever. It's just, you know, get it while it's cheap. And just because it's a fun little bizarre thing to collect. It's an odd little uh, Xbox promo. Uh, but that said, I also picked up various original Xbox games. Uh, again, just chipping away at that goal. I don't know if I'm ever going to complete that set, to be totally honest with you, because there's still so many that I'm missing, but I like that we're whittling away at it. Uh, we've got Circus Maximus Chariot Wars. Shrek Super Party. <laughs> um... The Legend of Spyro, A New Beginning, from that random era where Spyro was just, they had no idea what to do with the character and they were just putting him on everything. Uh, the Da Vinci Code, another one of these movie tie-in games. Again, this will never get re-released. There's no reason to ever re-release this game, so cool to get it. And then this one, which is nothing on the original Xbox, but there's still a bit of a story about this. NCAA College Basketball 2K3, uh, from when Sega still made sports titles. The only thing that's interesting about this game is that the GameCube version of this is actually one of the rarest games on the console because it was sold incredibly poorly and was recalled shortly after the launch. Similar to NBA Elite 11, but not quite as extreme. Uh, the Xbox and PS2 version of this is totally worthless, but the GameCube version, if you ever see it, that's a super expensive, rare game. Uh, for the PS1, I, I very rarely pick up PS1 games, but since, you know, I did that video on the X station, I was just, I was kind of feeling it, I want some more PS1 stuff, and I got this game called Spider. I actually saw this at a totally different convention in Chicago, at Pinball Expo, and I almost picked up, except it was missing the manuals, I was like, eh, whatever. But uh, then I saw it at Sack Gamers Expo, so I got a nice little deal on it, happy about that. So, boom, got that. Um, I got also a PS2, like, weird demo, uh, disc, like, I, okay. Twisted Metal Black Online. 
Um, now, Twisted Metal Black, of course, is one of my favorite games on the PS2. Like, I, I just absolutely love that game. Um, now, I'd heard about this many times, about how there was this online version of it. And I think that the online version was eventually built into the re-release of Twisted Metal Black when they did more print runs. But for a minute there, they had this. This was like a mail-away little promo version of the game that was just the online component of it. Uh, the disc essentially is useless now, as it doesn't really do anything. Um, but I had never actually seen a standalone copy of it, and I was able to get it for $5. So I was pretty happy about that. The disc is interesting, too, because it's actually on a, a CD-based disc, one of the blue ones, as opposed to one of the DVD-based ones. So there's not actually that much data on it. I think I ripped it, and it was like 450 or 500 megabytes, something like that. It's not that big. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was just something really cool to have because I'm also a big Twisted Metal guy, so it was just cool to add that to the collection. Uh, and then I got the biggest stack of GameCube stuff that I have received, well, North American GameCube stuff that I have managed to acquire in quite some time. Uh, and I don't know what it was, man. I was just like in that mode. I was just like, I need GameCube stuff. And there were some tables that had some good deals on stuff, and so I just went for it. So here's what we got. Um, well, I should clarify my GameCube goals before I say this. Uh, I do not want a complete GameCube set. I'm not trying to do that. However, I am trying to get a complete GameCube set minus all the games that existed on the original Xbox. Because once you subtract those, the, 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 the total becomes vastly more reasonable. Uh, I have almost all the European exclusives. I have almost all the Japanese exclusives. What I don't have is the majority of the American stuff. <laughs> Again, similar to the Xbox. Um, so, in this case, I was just chipping away at it. But, here's what we end up with. Mario Power Tennis. Mario Superstar Baseball. Piglet's Big Game, which is obviously the best game in here. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Donkey Konga 2. And Donkey Konga 1, which I only realized after the fact, this is actually the Canadian version of it, not that that makes any difference, but just kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, five of the six are actually Nintendo brand stuff, uh, even though none of them are heavy hitters, but it's still good to get them off the list. Uh, and this was actually, this last thing here was given to me as a gift by a guy named Steve who came out from Renton, uh, Washington. He came down to Sacramento for the con, which was nice of him to do. Uh, he hung out, he had fun and all that. He wanted to see the Sega Pluto, which we had brought out. Uh, but he also just randomly gave me this. Uh, this is a Dreamcast carrying case. This is not actually one that I ever had, so that was nice of him to do. He said he found it at Goodwill like quite some time ago and just, just decided to give it to me. I cleaned it up a bit. Um, it was kind of dusty when he gave it to me, so I took like uh, a net, like a, uh, one of those like wet nap uh, type of things, like uh, for your, washing your hands, like they give it, when you, they give you like when you get on a plane or whatever now, and you just like clean it all off. And uh, looks much better. It looks great. Um, so very cool. But yeah, if you open it up, it just has like specific like little slots to put like the console, the power supply, controller, all that. And then, man, I miss this era. They don't really do carrying cases all that much anymore. And it has a strap inside that you can connect here and then carry it around like a laptop case. So very neat. So thank you again to Steve for that. Hey, post-production Adam here. I made a small mistake. There was one game I left out which unfortunately had its own story, uh, which was this. This is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Uh, I got this when I was out in Sacramento, but not at the convention. Uh, this was actually given to me by GG Retro Gaming. I've, I've talked about GG Retro Gaming a lot in the past. It's actually an online store that's based out in Sacramento. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check them out. There's a coupon code in there, too. Just, you know, I hooked that up with, with Steven, the guy who runs it. Um, yeah, we met up briefly, and usually when that happens, he just kind of gives me something. In this case, this is what he hooked me up with, I assume because of the new movie. Um, and this game was kind of expensive before the new movie, so I assume even now it's probably even more intense. I don't want to talk about the movie obviously but it was a good movie you should go see it um but yeah no it's very cool to pick this up so huge shout out to gg retro gaming thank you uh but that was everything from uh sack gamer expo so we just have a couple of other random little items here first and foremost uh is this thing that i don't really know what this is so kelsey lewin a buddy of mine i'm sure a lot of you guys know from metal jesus crew she sent me uh for christmas she sent me like a, a box of cookies christmas cookies and she threw this in randomly and it's a it's a little baggy in the shape of a Sega SG-1000 controller. It's got a little zipper on it back there. And I was and I, I messaged her and I was like, thanks for the... Is this like for batteries? Like, what do you do? What are you holding this? She's like, yeah, battery holder. Why not? I have no idea. It's probably like for like kids for like a little pencil holder or something. But like a, a standard like American sized pencil or pen would not fit in this. So I don't really know what this is. But I, I don't know. Just a little Japan being Japan type of thing. But thank you, Kelsey, for doing that. Um, and I received a few packages, two of which I opened partially anyway, because I wasn't expecting anything, and I didn't know what to what they were. 
The first one came from France, and I was like, okay, I didn't order anything from France. What is this? And then I opened it up, and I just kind of went like, okay. <laughs> um, so you guys know I cover a lot of the indie Dreamcast stuff. In fact, I think I cover all of it. I do videos on the individual games. Uh, those games are distributed by three different groups. Uh, they can be distributed by Video Games New York, uh, here in the States, uh, Pixel Heart, which is like the European uh, company that handles that, and then Josh Proud is a guy who's named Phil. He himself occasionally will distribute stuff individually. So every once in a while, they don't communicate with each other, and they all just send me the same stuff. So I've done videos on some of these games, and I open this up, and well, here's what was in the package. Um, so they say to ZS Next, which I already did a video on like a month ago. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not knocking them. It was nice of them to do, but I, it's funny. Like I already had it, but maybe we'll do a giveaway or something. Maybe I'll give this away at a convention. I don't know. Um, Alice Sisters, which is also a good game, I did a video on. Uh, and Tough Guy, which again, I did a video. I, I have got videos on all three of these games for the Sega Dreamcast right now. You can go check them out. So again, we'll, we'll probably do some sort of giveaway or something like that. But they also included a Nintendo Switch game. This is called uh, uh, Okinawa Rush. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, the European version of it. Uh, this is number 2,222 of 20,000 copies. So very cool. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. So let's read here. Uh, Play as a martial arts master and take on the role of hero, uh, Mylan, or Shin, as they face hordes of ninjas, demons, and more in a desperate fight for their lives against the Black Mantis clan. It looks kind of like a side-scrolling beat-em-up, like think of a Streets of Rage, perhaps. That's based on just a screenshot, that's all I've seen. But uh, yeah, I mean, they just threw this in as, a, I guess, a nice little bonus. So thank you very much uh, over there. Um, yeah, and, th and then there's a bunch of advertisements for other stuff that they've got over at Pixel Heart. Oh, I didn't even notice, there's, a, there's also a pin in there. Uh, I don't think there was anything else. No, no, that's it. Um, but this one was not sent specifically by Pixel Heart. I believe this one was sent specifically by uh, Phil. So <laughs> very nice of him to do. Um, so that's that's it for that one. Then I got this random package which came from eBay and I was like, I didn't order anything. So I had no idea what this was. So I started to open it. Then I looked inside and I immediately dropped it. And I was like, I know what this is um, in the sense that I know who sent it. Uh, the evil Rob Thanos uh, said he was sending me something for Christmas, but he didn't tell me what. And so I, based on just looking at the side, I know this was him. Uh, there's a random note here that says, thank you and Merry Christmas, but this isn't from him. So let's just cut open. See, like, I can see through the side of the plastic, and you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll know. Ugh. This is, and I'm not entirely certain why you would, I mean, I know why Rob would do this. He's basically, you know, Rob's doing that thing. You ever buy somebody something because you want them to not like it so that they give it back to you and you get it? I think that's what Rob's doing here. That's that's kind of Rob's thing. This is... Uh, this is a Franklin the Turtle game. Franklin the Turtle Clubhouse Adventure. Uh, I'm guessing this is a PC game. It actually... Made with Macromedia? Yeah, it must be a PC game. It looks like it's sealed. This is... So if you guys aren't Rob Thanos on my channel, um, well, he's on the, the podcast a lot. I introduced him to Franklin the Turtle for the GameCube mostly as a joke, but he ended up absolutely loving the game. Now he refers to the, the, the character as the GOAT, uh, the greatest of all time. And um, yeah, no, here it is. Windows Macintosh CD-ROM. So yeah, this is a Franklin the Turtle game that I will not be playing. <laughs> but thank you very much, Rob, for the gag gift. Um, but yes, uh, yeah, he loves Franklin the Turtle. What can I say? Uh, now, moving on, we got a couple of other packages here. Uh, one is from Video Games New York. I'm not totally certain what it is. Uh, and then one is a thing I ordered. And then that'll be that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the one from Video Games New York. Uh, I Okay, cut through packaging here. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, thank you, Doki. I'm not sure if this is a new Dreamcast game or... No, it looks like a Switch game. Let's see here. Okay, get that out, and there's some sort of, what is this? Okay, congrats, bonus, let's see, from Video Games New York Software, so there's some, some sort of like extra little envelope here, and I'm trying to, there's a sticker on the back that they put that I'm trying not to rip too badly. Okay, inside, oh, he made a bunch of things, wooden things, oh, that's cool. Um, 
So he's been going kind of crazy with these little like wooden things that he got like some sort of 3D wood printer. Let me see here. I don't know if I put them in correctly. Drop that there. I'm guessing this is how this puzzle is solved. Or maybe not. I don't know. No, that, that makes sense. And oh, there we go. That's cool, actually. So he, he designed this. I just put it together real quick. It's a nice little wooden display of Okinawa Rush, which I think was the Switch game I was just looking at a minute ago. And that's, that's what it looks like. So, yeah, I guess that's meant to go with that. And what game... Oh, I guess I could have guessed that. He sent me a copy of Okinawa Rush. <laughs> you see what I mean? They don't always communicate with each other. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much to the guys at Video Games New York. He sent me the American version of Okinawa Rush. So if you wanted to see what the two versions look like next to each other, there you go. You have the American version of Okinawa Rush and the European version of Okinawa Rush. I swear this was not planned, guys. I, had, I did not know. <laughs> But uh, thank you to both of them, to Josh Fred and to Video Games New York for that. Um, wow. <laughs> okay. The last thing up, uh, which I actually totally know what this is. This is something I ordered a very long time ago uh, to the point where I thought, like, I forgot about it even happening. And then when I remembered, I contacted the company being like, is this still being made? Because, like, this was, this was a long time ago. Like, I'm never that guy who reaches out to companies being like, where's my thing? But in this case, it was... Like, they, they had been shipping that thing for so long, I thought maybe my order got lost, or I didn't know what happened. But here it is. It has shown up. It has arrived. And I'm super excited about it. This is vinyl records of the score of Resident Evil 1, as well as Resident Evil 2. I'm not a huge music guy, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know from watching me over the years. But I do like my vinyl when it's scores and things I'm familiar with, like video game scores or movie scores, etc. And I really like the music from the first two Resident Evil games. So having these on vinyl, it's nice. Like, again, not a sound guy. So for years when people would tell me like, oh, vinyl's so much better, I was like, whatever. And then until I actually had access to a record player, thanks again to a guy named Spock Avriel, who probably hasn't watched the channel in like seven years, but I still give you shout outs, dude. Thanks to that guy for hooking me up with the record player at one point, and I finally was like, I get it. <laughs> uh, and so now when I get a chance to pick up these really cool scores I do so yeah um, I don't even remember where this came from anymore but it was from it must be laced records I think those are the guys who actually distribute this yeah so I, I just bought these but I bought them like I don't know maybe over a year ago two years ago or something like that it was quite some time ago but regardless that's here so that will do it for my pickups for uh, December 2021 uh, thank you shout out to video games New York as well as um, uh, Pixel Heart, aka in this case Josh Prod. Uh, I guess, I guess Rob, I'm not really thanking you for this because I think you want me to come bring this to you so that you can have it. Uh, thank you to Kelsey Lewin. Thank you to everybody over at Sack Gamers Expo, uh, as well as Kansas City Retro, and uh, to the people such as the individual who wishes to remain anonymous, Steve, for that thing, and so on and so forth. I appreciate all you guys. Appreciate you guys very much for watching. Again, please like, comment, subscribe. As always, go on the social media stuff in the description: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon. Follow me on all those things, uh, and check out the new channel as well. Thank you very much. Happy New Year, and I'll see you all later.